Hello and welcome back to another episode of the DIYGuy.net. Alright, so we're going to show you how to fix a bunch of problems here on this 2007 Subaru Outback. Uh, they're going to pray into the rear trunk lid. Um, this particular one, the radio reception is not good. It also lost the function of locking the rear tailgate uh, using the rear wiper and the rear defrost. So this is going to be more prevalent on the 05 to 09, um, this similar style headlight design. Uh, what happens is you open and close the tailgate. Um, what happens is the wires get pinched in the same spot and thus breaking the sheathing on them and then eventually breaking the wire. Uh, so we have a couple of broken wires between the car here and the actual trunklet. So this particular one, maybe a month ago or so, they noticed the radio was diminishing um, the signal. Uh, they could be in the same spot, have it on the same station, and it would be very spotty. Uh, more recently, they noticed that when it was raining, they went to put the rear wiper on. It would work one day, not the next day. Um, what was happening is the wire was touching as they, you know, put something in the trunk, slammed the door shut, and then the wire would reconnect, and it would work that day. Then they put something else in, and it would separate out and so on and then uh, more recently like i said they would lock it with the fob or in actually the door um, and the four doors would lock but the actual deck lid or trunk uh, would not lock so the actual uh, lock wire actually broke so we'll show you where to look i mean first you want to obviously check your fuse we'll show you where to check that as well um, as you're probably gonna have to replace it when you're done replacing the wires um, because it probably was shorted out anyway so we'll go ahead and show you where the fuse is located uh, then we'll go ahead and go on the back and start showing you where to check for those broken wires and then how to fix it. Alright, so what you're going to do is open the driver's side door, um, kneel down right here on the outside, and you will see this panel right here. Um, just pull down, pull towards the driver's seat, it'll undo the bottom, um, and then you can go ahead and look on the back side of it as well. And you can see which uh, fuse is what. So one, two, three, four over, four down is your rear windshield wiper. Um, so that would be the one I marked right here in the black. Kind of getting hard to see. One, two, three, four. This one right here. Uh, you can get a set of needle nose pliers or grab your fuse puller from the engine compartment and pull it out and check it. Uh, but we already know this one is bad as we know we got the broken wires in the trunk. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get set back up there and show you where to check for those broken wires and how to fix them. All right, so once you get your rear trunk lid or deck lid open, uh, these are your grommets where the wires travel through from the car to the rear deck lid. Uh, this side over here is your driver's side. Uh, this houses your tube for the sprayer and also the wires that go into here, which is where the uh, radio amplifier mounts as the antenna is within our back glass. So if we go ahead and pull this grommet out of the trunk, uh, part you'll see that these wires are all connected up here uh, but they usually break right here when it comes out of this grommet so if we pull the lower side out this is where we're going to find our broken wires that go to our amplifier and why our signal uh, reception for our radio is bad turn hands here so you can see all right so yeah you can just see that one already is broken the bigger red one let's see is there another one i think there was two uh, yeah, there it is on the back side. So as you can see, those two there are broken, um, which go to our um, amplifier for our radio. This bigger tube here is just the tube that carries the washer fluid um, to the back hatch here. So that's what's in the driver's side harness. So you can go ahead and check that one for broken wires. Now if we go to the passenger side over here, um, it's going to be the same thing. You can pull this grommet up top, but you're not going to find the broken wires. They usually break right here where they make that bend. So we'll go ahead and pop the bottom one out here. We'll slide it up a little bit so we can see. Uh, and as you can see, yeah, we got the black wire that's broken, uh, this green wire, this bigger red and uh, blue wire here. That one actually looks like that was the one that popped the fuse because it's all black. Uh, this green wire, another green wire broken. Uh, so you can see we've got a bunch of wires broken in here. Um, these are probably the ones that are going to our defroster, our rear wiper, and our lock. Uh, so what we're going to do is go ahead and take this side panel off over here. Uh, the other side panel here will lower the top half of the uh, roof liner down. Uh, then we'll go ahead and pop the side panels off on the upper piece and then the center. Uh, what we're going to do is just cut the wires within here, cut the wires within up here, and then replace this section here with all new wires. I've seen other people just solder these or butt connect these together, um, but all of them are getting um, 
cracked and worn um, as it flexes in the same spot all the time. So you really want to replace them all or you're just going to be in here doing it again. Uh, so that's why we're going to take those covers off and replace the wires between there and there with new wires um, so it won't happen for a long time. All right, so we'll start with the right side or passenger side first. Um, sometimes you can just squeeze and just pull it straight towards you and they'll pop off. Now, if you end up pulling these white clips out of the body or frame of the car, uh, you can just grab a flat screwdriver and just uh, detach. As this one has the wire attached to it, so we need to leave the clip within the car. Pop it off like that. Go ahead and pop the cover off. We can reattach these into the body of the car. Uh, then we'll go ahead and do the other side. And then we'll go ahead and just do the same thing. We'll just lightly pull on these to push the push pins out of there and pop that off. So you can see this is where the grommet goes through. They come around and then go right into this Clarion uh, amplifier for our radio reception. And then there's our tube for the washer. And then on this side, this is our harnesses that go through for the rear brake light and also up and around for the lock and the uh, wiper and all that. So now we need to go ahead and do the car side so we can get to these wires in here. Um, so for the sides, just grab them at the top here. Wiggle them, they pop right off. They got these little push pins on them. And, all right, for the top of the back here, we're just gonna stick our hand in here uh, and just slightly pull down. You'll see these little push pins right here, right here, and also over here. Um, so right here is where our harness wire is. So we'll go ahead and start on the driver's side. We'll grab our wire strippers. What we're going to do is strip the broken wires within the driver's side grommet, which is two. Once we have them stripped, we'll go ahead and twist the end of the wire uh, to make it nice and round. That way it'll slide right into our butt connector rather easily. Now with the butt connector, we already cut a piece of 12 inch or so long wire and attached it to one end of the butt connector. So we just need to slide our butt connector on and crimp it on with our crimping pliers. Another thing I wanted to mention, you want to be able to use the same gauge wire or thickness of wire that's in there. Uh, luckily for me, we have a parts car. I was able to steal the wire out of the parts car and keep the color code or color of the wire the same. Uh, so when I reconnect it, I can just match the colors up and make it nice and easy. All right, so now that we have the extension wires crimped on, we'll go ahead and tape the end real quick. What we're going to do is use a rigid piece of wire or a snake here. We're going to push it through the grommet and then go ahead and use electrical tape and tape the flexible wires to the rigid wire. Uh, that way we can pull the rigid wire and the flexible wires right through the grommet and we don't have to mess around with trying to wiggle them through. Uh, it'll just help guide it straight through. All right, so now that we got the wires through the grommet, we can go ahead and remove the electrical tape and remove the rigid wire from our flexible wires. Next, we can go ahead and put the lower part of the grommet, the one that goes in the car, into the car, making sure it's in there nice and tight and snug. That way it's watertight. Next, we can go ahead and remove the electrical tape off our flexible wires or replacement wires. Then we can go ahead and grab the wire strippers and we'll go ahead and strip the wires coming from the amplifier and get those ready to make our connection. Once we have them stripped, we'll go ahead and twist them together and then snip off the extra. So we'll go ahead and grab our crimpers and crimp the other butt connector end onto our wires that go into our reception for our amplifier for the antenna. All 
Once we finish the connection, we'll go ahead and push the excess wire up into the trunk hatch. Then we'll go ahead and put the grommet inside the trunk part. Make sure it's in there all the way and nice and snug and sealed so it'll be nice and watertight. Once we have that grommet into the trunk lid, we can go ahead and push the excess wire from this side back down through the electrical tape and make it look a little nicer and pushing all the excess into the trunk itself. I uh, will just put a little bit of tape here just to hold everything nice and tight and snug. Alright, so now that we're done on the driver's side, we have our grommet in top and bottom. We replaced the wires within there. We taped our wires up here and tucked them in nice. We're ready now to move on to the passenger side. Alright, so we're on the passenger side. I ended up getting caught in the passing thunder shower that went by. I'm not sure if you can still hear it, but it's still actually raining outside. So we ended up putting the car inside the garage so we could finish this video. Um, but the steps are really going to be about the same. Uh, we're going to cut the corrosion and even up our wire, attach our butt connector, push that connection down inside the car, um, run the new wire through our wire loom or grommet here. Uh, it's going to be a little harder on this one as there's more wires. Once we get it through, we'll make another connection and then push that up into the tailgate itself. Yellow with green, yellow with green, brown with yellow. Alright, so from here it's just going to be repeating the process, stripping the side of the tailgate. Go ahead and crimping on our extension wires. Like I said, they're about a 12 inches or a foot long. Uh, just enough to be able to push this connection up inside the tailgate and when we make the other one down inside the car and that the new wires would end up within the grommet. Now, like I said, I had a donor car, so I was able to go wire for wire or color for color um, and match them up. You'll see at the end though, I think I was two wires short on matching colors. Um, so I just had to mismatch them there. I just took a picture with my cell phone. That way when I did the car side, I could just look at the picture and match the colors up to make sure I connected the right wire to the right wire. Now if you don't have a matching harness or can't get one, you may want to go wire for wire rather than cutting them all like I did at the start, just to ensure that you got each wire connected to the right connection inside the car. Next I just took some electrical tape and taped around where I made the connections um, just to hold them together a little bit easier. Uh, then I went ahead and slid the connection up inside the tailgate. taking your boot off it does say door and body uh, so the body goes towards the car and the door goes towards the hatch the door and then I also went ahead and taped the very end of the wires that way I can easily slide it through the grommet as I'll show you next tape to here tape the end just to make it slide through there a little bit nicer Depending on where your wires broke here and how much you got enough to pull up and out and make your connections, uh, this is where you may need to push this through and make the connections in the car.
So once I got our car wires pulled back inside the car, we got our extension wires pulled down where the wiring harness goes. I went ahead and took the wire cutters, cut the ends and evened them up and removed the damaged sheathing of the wire on our car harness. Then we took the wire strippers, stripped them off, and then used the crimpers and crimped on our butt connectors on the car harness side. All right, so now that we have the car side done and all our butt connectors are connected on the car harness side, we can go ahead and grab the wire strippers. We'll go ahead and strip the extension pieces of the wire. That way we're ready to make the final connection here and finish up on the passenger side. Now for this one, like I said, I had the donor harness, so I can just go color for color, match them up, and then butt connect or crimp them together. Uh, until I get to those last two or three that I didn't have the exact match for, which I said I'll look at the cell phone picture and match them up just to verify that I am correct on the way I have them paired up. And then I'll crimp those together and we should be done making the final connections over here on the passenger side. All right, so we got all our connections made. We went around, checked them, make sure they're not gonna pull out. We also make sure we didn't have a wire sticking out. Um, that way when they get energized, they're not gonna pop the fuse. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and replace that fuse. Uh, that way we could test all these circuits to make sure everything works as it should before we go ahead and button this up um, and start reinstalling our interior panels here. So we'll go ahead and replace the fuse for the rear windshield wiper. Like I said, it was four over and four down. This 15 amp right here that I did black. if the camera can pick that up but the very uh, end of it is broken so we'll grab our new one reinstall our cover lining the bottom two up clicking it in pushing it up and clipping it shut. The wiper on delay and on. Um, right here on the driver's side is the lead going to the de rear defrost here in the rear glass. So we're gonna go ahead and test that next. We'll grab our multimeter. Uh, we're gonna put the positive lead right there. You can put the negative lead right here on this ground wire near our amplifier. We're gonna go ahead and set it right on the uh, strut tower here and act as our ground um, right there at the meter. So you should get anywhere from 25 to maybe 35 volts with it on. So we're going to touch our positive lead to the lead up by the uh, rear glass. So as you can see, we got uh, 29, 28 volts going to it. Uh, and if we go ahead and shut it off, you'll see we go back down to zero, uh, back on. You'll see that it is functioning correctly. So the rear defroster wire we have right as well. Uh, we're ready to go ahead and button this back up and install our interior panels. All right, so now that we replaced that fuse, tested everything to make sure it functions as it should, uh, we can go ahead and tidy this up a little bit and then reinstall the headliner and get the rest of our interior trim pieces on as well.
Once we have the wires tucked in, we can go ahead and push the headliner and snap those three clips into position to hold that in. Next, we can move to the right side, make sure it's facing the right direction, and we can align the push pins and push it back into position. We also want to make sure your weather stripping is on the outside of the panel. Once we have the passenger side done, we'll go ahead and do the driver's side. Same thing, aligning the pins, make sure it is facing the right direction and making sure it is underneath the weather stripping. We'll just tap it in, make sure those push pins are nice and clipped in. So you just gotta line up these pins in the holes. Um, you wanna put this one in first and then the side piece. So with everything back working the way it should, uh, with the radio can get a good signal now, uh, the rear windshield wiper works, the rear defroster works, and most importantly the rear lock here for the trunk or lift gate is back working. Uh, that's it, we just tried to fix those problems by replacing the wiring in the hatch of an 05 to 09 Outback. Don't forget to click the link in the description which will take you to our website for a full write up. You can also click that subscribe button in the middle. On the right, we have a recommended video just for you. And on the left, you'll find our recent upload. Thanks for watching another episode of the DIYGuy.net.